Look at that YouTube so to add to the list of silly things that I can do with this uh, UKC 4000 4000 what power inverter it won't start things with the big inrush current like uh, induction motors transformers things like that it doesn't like starting them so what you actually do to start them is turn the device on and then power the inverter up and it'll start it so today we're going to try and use this to weld with we're uh, in the high 14s up there the bank's as charged as it's going to be the, the weld is actually sitting there ticking over now um, I did that so I could actually get it to start otherwise it beeps and carries on and like I said it doesn't like inrush current we got this little gasless, I'd say 80 to 100 amp, really simple basic welder. Uh, it's sitting there buzzing away right now. We picked it up at a garage sale years ago from me mate. It's got a T100P, so let's say 100 amp. Um, max input current 11 amps. Yeah, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, so we got this uh, just a chunk of uh, fairly heavy walled steel. Let's get the mask on. Now, one thing you always got to remember about these uh, cheaper little MIGs is the Electrode positive, so that's always actually live. Let's see if we can't lay just the smallest bead down with it. Ooh, try again. Ooh, we're back on. So like, why come out the end and it did something, so let's start. This is so cruel. I'm just going to find a thinner bit of metal. Alright, we'll just have a little go at this seam here. See what we can do. I think it's picking it up as a fault, like as if it's short circuiting, it's not enjoying it. I don't think it's actually too much of a current draw. That little welder is just so light on natural current usage. Right, so I actually turned that up to high, and it can handle a little, what was that, probably two or three second pulse? Yeah, it doesn't like it. Alright, so I've still got the welding helmet on. Now we're trying 140 amp inverter based welder with a stick electrode in it. 
tak over. Just because we can. Hopefully the um, inverter based welder will smooth out the inrush. Bloody hell, it's a 3.2mm rod too. Oh, we'll see. It'll either work or it won't. <laughs> I think I've got some 2.4 rods inside, I'll just go and grab one. Alright, we've got a little 2.4mm electrode now. I'll turn the current down to about 50. Let's see what happens. Right, YouTube, we're going to call that as a no. No go. It cannot do it. It's just too uh, too spasmodic up and down. It's got plenty of input current. We've got these four gauge leads from a 14 volt pack. Just three of those, five of those. We've got this big beast here, which, uh, as you've seen the other day, I was easily continually putting out 60 amps. And uh, we've also got 200 amp hours of little buddies down there on back to this pack, so they're all joined together. There's tons of current that can be fed to the device, but it's it's definitely an inrush thing. Once you get that, the, the sticking, what the inverter based welders will automatically turn themselves down, so that you can actually break them free rather than melting well and truly on there. And uh, that wouldn't come free. So every time you get a bit of an arc length, the current's got to be lifted as the current comes up to make the arc length maintained so your rod doesn't go out. It's a uh, current goes up and the inverter says no. 4000 watt? Nope. 8000 surge? Hell no. And uh, inrush current they do not like. But things like drills, stuff like that, it's definitely going to run them all day. Still cheap, still useful. It runs that, no worries. I'm still going to use it for stuff, but uh, it's obviously not as good as a uh, expensive brand one. But for something that's 4,000 constant, 8,000 surge, in a good brand, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, could be worth anywhere into the couple of thousand dollar range. Thanks for watching YouTube. You guys asked the question, what can you do with it? Yeah, you can't weld with it. There you go. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.